Hi guys, uh, today we're going to be continuing looking at mechanical devices uh, by looking at levers and the three types of lever which are called either class or order which are first class, second class, third class and how they work and what they do. Now there's going to be a range of potential outcomes you could do. I have done some experiments outside with found objects. I have made a card learning map which I'll show you a quick time lapse of how to do and I've also made some scale models. Now, I've primarily made the scale models as a resource for when we're back at school, but if you'd like to do the same thing, it's quite a fun craft project to work on. Uh, and by doing the outside experiment and making the models, you can really get an idea of how the levers work and the benefits of each of them. Whereas the learning map, the card model, um, you can't really use as much, but it will help you to retain and remember the information. Right guys, so I ventured outside of the workshop for today's lesson. Uh, we're going to be learning about levers. Um, I'm going to show you a way now that you can do this as a practical example outside using found objects to try and really get a feeling of what the point of these three types of levers are and the functions they perform. So I'm going to use a garden chair, a bit of wood and a brick so I can get a feeling of which levers are more effective and what their uses are and how they can work. So if I position my piece of wood roughly on the centre here, I'm going to be making a first order lever. So this brick here, I don't think I can lift that up with one finger very effectively. So I'm going to place it on the end of my load. This centre of the chair becomes my fulcrum. Now if I try and push it from here, it's incredibly difficult. It's actually heavier than it was before. If I move over here, the force of the lever means that I can move the brick with ease. And I think you can see from the example that the most common uh, way of thinking of this is like a seesaw. So that is a first order lever. So we're going to look at a second order lever now. The most common example of this and a good way of thinking about it is a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow, the fulcrum, is the wheel itself which is at the front and your load is in the centre and you're lifting from the back. Your effort is the back. I've clamped the brick on now because it kept sliding off. So the chair is my fulcrum, my load is in the centre, and I'm applying the effort from the back. What happens if I adjust the fulcrum? If I go closer with the load to the fulcrum, it becomes easier to lift in some ways. If I go further with the load from the fulcrum, it becomes harder to lift. So try an experiment like this, you might get a bit of exercise as well, and you can feel the real effects of the change in the fulcrum and the different types of lever. If I get it in the right position like that, that is now a lot easier than it was with my first order lever. And now we'll look at third order levers. So a third order lever, the best example is probably uh, sweeping or mopping the floor. So my pivot, my fulcrum point is now at the top, my load is at the bottom and my effort is applied in the middle. So as you can see there, it looks like I'm sweeping the floor. If I apply that this way around, actually, if I'm applying my effort in the centre with my fulcrum at the end, the brick is harder to lift than it is as an individual brick. And that is quite an interesting experiment that you can try at home. A bit of physics and also part of the Design Technology AQA GCSE specification. So I'm back inside now and uh, showing you how to make the card learning map that demonstrates the same thing. As I say, this is a good revision resource, but it doesn't let you actually test out and have the feeling of changing variables in the lever and finding out how effective it is to use. But this is something you can probably easily do at home. So as I said, I've made some models to test this out as well, which you could do. I've used some offcuts of tongue and groove and some pieces of plywood along with some dowel. We could use the pencil thing we used before to replace the dowel. You can make the same thing in card with card and a pencil running through or you could use resistant materials like wood if you've got them available. Remember though you can do this just through the learning mat and the experiments. So first order I have used red to uh, highlight where the fulcrum is on each design and green to show you where the load would go and then the effort comes from me. So. There's my first order, little seesaw. My second order with my fulcrum 
and my load so I can lift like that. And my third order with my load on the end and my effort coming from above. Uh, below. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Try that if you want. I've actually just glue gun these together um, and they make quite fun little objects. We're going to be building up to making uh, a contraption that uses a range of different components. So if you do make something like this, these could then become elements of what we build later. Um, yeah, try it yourself. So we've looked at levers today uh, in a range of different ways. Um, as a basic expectation, I'd like you to make the learning map and have a go at playing around with some objects outside if you've got time. Um, or you can work on making uh, some little models to test it out and keep uh, as another tangible, interactive revision resource at a later date. Cheers.